the purpose of community is to have a vulnerable place to share your shadow. At its core, it's cultivating a community that is choosing love always and making the commitment to personal growth and coming back to love. We were put here by the divine to be caretakers and stewards of this earth. The land is an extension of our body, of our spirit. It's a reflection of what we are cultivating in our own temple, in our own sanctuary, within ourselves and within our souls. Are you living in a state of vibration and frequency and energy and awareness that you are the divine expressing itself, that you are a sovereign soul, and that you have the full authority and autonomy over your creation, over your experience, over your reality. Because nobody in this world could possibly know what your highest timeline is other than you. You have everything that you need within yourself. You are sovereign and free, always. You just have to know how to claim it. You just have to know how to align with it. Remembering that divinity, remembering that sovereignty, remembering that you are healer because we are all healers. Remembering that sanctuaries are what it's all supposed to be. This whole planet can and will be a sanctuary someday. When we align ourselves with God, everything falls into place. Welcome, Welcome home, home to, to the, the Loving Consciously, Consciously Podcast. My name is Amaris. And my name is Eric. And if you are like us, nobody, nobody taught, taught you, you how, how to love. love. We are best friends and life partners here to vulnerably and authentically share our seven-year journey to unconditional love. Our mission is to help you learn how to love consciously in all of your relationships so we can journey together towards a more effective, intentional, and fulfilling way of giving and receiving love. Loving, Loving Consciously. consciously. Together, we have overcome neurodivergence, mental health, addiction, pregnancy loss, infidelity, and grief. After six years, the lack of knowledge on how to heal or love each other through these challenges led to our separation. After us both spiritually awakening and recommitting, we built our new conscious partnership founded on unconditional love and a commitment to personal growth. Thank you for joining us as we put it all out there to show you the duality of our love's pain and beauty. And remind you that you have both the capacity to love consciously and the power to always, always choose love. love. Namaste and welcome back to the Loving Consciously podcast. We are back from our week trip flying to California and we are so excited to be here with you today to talk about how love is a sanctuary. We are going to be exploring this vision of a love-based sanctuary and sovereign conscious community. Before we get into that, we did just have a wonderful experience that we really wanted to share with you all. We flew to California for two reasons, the first being High Vibe Fest. And as we've shared on this podcast before, festivals, music festivals, used to be a really big part of our lives, especially our unconscious lives. It was historically a really big escapism and partying tool for us. As we really deeply started to go on this spiritual journey, there came a point where that no longer resonated with our conscious lives. It's a very alcohol-based culture. It's medicines that we respect and use as medicines being used as party fun, as drugs. And also just the culture of the energies, the frequencies of the music, the very, you know, dark, demonic merchandise and imagery and a lot of the things around that. And so we stepped away from music festivals, which at the time was a really big sacrifice for us. It felt like a loss. It was definitely something that we loved. And so to be able to go and experience High Vibe, which if you don't know what High Vibe is, it is a conscious, alcohol-free, vegan, High Vibe music festival. And so it's exactly like a music festival with multiple stages and camping and activities and vendors and food, but everything is at that standard of absolutely no alcohol, all vegan food. I think everything was organic as well, or most everything was. All of the vendors were selling, you know, cotton clothing and linen clothing, you know, high frequency fabrics. And it really was just this beautifully curated container of that high standard. Something that really stood out to me, we were at the height of, I think it was Saturday night. So the main night, main stage, the main DJ, which is the person who puts it on, Equanimous. 
And I had a moment, you know, it's like almost 10 o'clock at night where I started looking around and I realized in a crowd of easily a couple hundred people, I did not see one single cell phone or e-cigarette or cigarette. And throughout the entire weekend, there was no, at least almost no smoking and vaping and cell phones and constant taking of photos. You know, you see it like concerts and music festivals, you look around and like 80% of the crowd has their phone out. And it really was just like this beautifully curated love community, you know, lots of meditation and lots of really beautiful workshops. We did so many amazing workshops and to just be in that space was so healing for me to just be in this space with like-minded people. You know, I could eat everything that was there and, you know, the, the clothing and just all of the things were so aligned. And so for me, it was so healing. And that was the highlight was that moment at main stage at kind of the peak of the festival, looking around and being like, wow, people are here. You know, yes, there is use of medicines, but it's conscious use. They're using it to be more present, to connect, to move energy and trauma through the body, through movement and music, not to go and party and have a good time and escape. It was truly a healing experience. Music festivals, when we started going to them together as a couple, was this time where we would go and escape our traumas and our negative experiences in our life and look for that love and that community and that just feeling of being one with the collective from these festivals that truly was present this weekend this was a large safe container and on the topic of sanctuary this festival was a sanctuary for us it was an opportunity to see what the world can be like when everybody is present, everybody is choosing love, everybody is aligned. And so it was a glimpse into that future of what we're cultivating as people on the path of healing and the people on the path of choosing love. And it's a testament to what truly is possible when we all come together behind a vision and a way of life. This container was beautiful. Everybody was walking around in high spirits, charging each other's batteries. It wasn't this draining experience where everybody was leaving feeling exhausted and like they partied all weekend. If anything, I was walking around and talking to people and everybody felt so much more energized and so much more alive because we all brought our lights together and shone brighter. It was also an opportunity to experience this community and spirituality in the divine, walking around in a music festival, lighting up incense and Palo Santo and sage and listening to organic wubs. Um, that's a joke that we've been passing around. And doing these workshops that are cultivating intimacy and transparency and connection and consciousness and all the things that we've been talking about on this podcast, as we journey into this next phase of our vision for Sanctuary, this was a really good example of what can be done. Absolutely. Huge thank you to High Vibe Fest, High Vibe Records, Equanimous, and everybody that made this possible. We made so many soul connections, met so many amazing people. I left this weekend feeling energized and tired in the sense that a lot of energy had moved, but better. I left feeling better. And traditionally, I would leave, you know, events in general, concerts, music festivals, like, yeah, it was a really nice high and a dopamine hit. And then I was exhausted and drained and hungover. And so this was awesome. Getting into our journey to get to this content today, what we're going to be talking about, we're going to be looking at what is a sanctuary? How do we cultivate community? How do we steward land? How do we return to sovereignty? And what is a healing sanctuary, a healing center in the new world? All of that is what we're building through this land and the story I'm about to tell you. Because we didn't just go to California for High Vibe Fest. We also went to California to tour the land we've been looking at. We realize we very lightly talked about this here, but we haven't gone into what this is and where this has come from. And so that's what we're going to do real quick. We're going to give you this five-year story that led to 
us touring this land right after High Vibe Fest. We left the festival in the morning, we drove five hours, and had a six-hour showing of this property. So that story, it really has been almost five years. I remember the very first time that you told me this crazy idea you had. We didn't even know what downloads were. We were completely spiritually unconscious, had absolutely no attachment to anything with the divine or ourselves or energy. And you had told me that you had this idea to buy some land, we're talking like five, ten acres, and build an off-grid com- commune is what you used to call it with like four or five of our closest you know ethically non-monogamous couple friends and we'd all just like pool our money together so we'd have way more money so we you know it being screwed on taxes wouldn't be as much of a problem and what I want to say is the divine whatever you call that you know we these days use the word god god source creator any of those work but the divine is always working for our highest good it will meet you where you're at. And so five years ago, prior to knowing anything about spirituality and consciousness, completely and utterly in our patterns and escapism and being run by our egos, not even aware we had an ego. I couldn't have even defined the word ego for you five years ago. And this seed was being planted, albeit in a lower vibrational unconscious way, it came from the intentions of, ah, screw the system, and I'm sick of giving them my money for taxes, and you know, we hate people, society sucks, right? Like it was from a very negative place. However, that planted the seed. And that thought, that little, huh, wouldn't that be cool? Never left us. And it got louder and stronger and it evolved with us over time, over years of consciousness and spirituality and realizing, oh, this is the way of the future. It's been such a beautiful journey. It truly has. And What you shared about the divine meeting you where you're at is so true. It's a breadcrumb trail. And those breadcrumbs are tuned to where you're at in life. And when you get those downloads and those experiences of like, huh, this is outside of what I would normally think or do, but there's some passion and there's some fire behind it. There's a charge. Pursue that. See where it leads you because... As you grow, the vision will grow along with you. Yeah, absolutely. And so that was the first seed. It was five years ago. That was 2019 when we moved to Portland. Just within months of moving to Portland, that idea came. And then from there, you know, as you know, we went through a lot of suffering, a lot of darkness, a lot of growth, a lot of work, our separation. And really coming up to about a year ago, we were going back and forth between like this RV journey and getting roommates at our old house, the house that we owned in Portland, which could have comfortably fit three couples. It was a big house with half an acre, and that was the highest thought and highest expression of what we're going to talk about today in our old lives, and we had outgrown that, and so we were still craving that community and really starting to get into, you know, raw, vegan, healthy eating. I was getting into greenhouse gardening, and we were really starting to see through various events of not having power for over a week and, you know, our water getting shut off and things like that, that we had no control and power over our, our resources and our bodies and our lives. Like everything was being controlled by some type of external system. And that if something happened, we were not going to be able to take care of ourselves. And so that bled obviously into what we're doing now, which is we, we did the thing, we made the commitment, And we sold our house and everything we owned, started this RV journey, and this was twofold. And we don't really talk about this a whole lot on here so that you can understand why we're doing what we're doing and what we're actually doing here. We sold our house to take back that money, both a six-figure investment that we got through blessings of buying at the height of what was going on in 2020 and just making really smart financial decisions. We had a 2.75 interest rate. And in under three years, we had a six-figure profit of equity on that house. We also, when we had lost my father, had paid down our mortgage, another six-figure number, because we thought that's what you do, right? Like what we were working towards in our unconscious lives was slaving away to a system to pay 30% in taxes to then pay another 30% to our mortgage. When we sold this house, we recovered quite a nice chunk of money. And we took that money 
and very aggressively invested it 100%, 100% of every penny from our house went into crypto, as well as, you know, our life savings that we had invested before that. Through a very conservative number, we're going to see on some of our portfolio upwards of 10x, and in a couple of other areas, upwards of 100x. In under a year, we should be seeing those numbers here in the next few months. We've already, I think, doubled our money in like six months. And so that's as far as I'm going to go into the crypto stuff because that's not what this is about. So that was step one, was selling the house to get rid of that final attachment and to accept and allow in the reality and the manifestation that half an acre is not enough for the calling and the dreams we have. We needed to think bigger. And so that was half of it. And the other half was coming into the RV to travel the country full time. We thought it was going to be to look for the land, but we found it on our first stop. That's how awesome God is. (laughs) However, it ended up being to be mobile and go to all of these events, all of these festivals, sovereignty festivals, the Conscious Life Expo, to be able to go visit other communities and sanctuaries and ashrams and to start going around and collecting the pieces of this community one by one. And it has been this incredible wild ride of finding not only the pieces physically in people, right? People coming to rally behind this community, but also pieces energetically, seeing what's working in other communities, what's not working, what are opportunities for growth, ideas that we couldn't possibly comprehend by staying in one container. By being mobile, it's allowed us to broaden our minds and welcome in different perspectives, different cultures, different energetics, so that we can begin to cultivate something that actually works. You did a great job of summarizing the 3D aspects of kind of how we got here. In tandem with that has been this spiritual journey as well of kind of growing up to a certain point and then realizing that our container was too small and having to go through that uncomfortable molting process of shedding that container, which feels like death. If we're being truly honest here, it's not a pleasant experience, but it is so worth it. When we were living in Portland and on that property, that was our home. That was our sanctuary. When we had people coming over, our closest friends, they would always leave feeling energized and full of love like we did when we went to High Vibe. That house was our sanctuary. It was a sanctuary for our friends. At the time, we thought that we could fit and stuff this vision into this container that we were comfortable with, that we were safe in. And as the vision grew, as God continued to drop bigger and bigger breadcrumbs for us, and we continued to accept them, it became very clear that we could no longer stay there. And so shedding all of that, shedding the attachments and moving out was a really big step in that journey. If you are on your journey and you're reaching that edge of your container, know that there is hope and there's something so much bigger and so much more beautiful waiting for you on the other side. Mm, Absolutely. Yeah, it's been quite a journey. And so the reason we share all of this is to show you This has been a long journey. It takes great sacrifices. It takes a lot of faith and courage. And it comes with great rewards. And to summarize this so we can get into the real content for today, we got to see it. (laughs) I'm getting emotional. We finally got to see the land that we have been staring at for six months. So super fast forwarded version. We leave Oregon in our trailer. We're going to do a one year tour of the country full time in our trailer. And our first stop, we fell in love with NorCal in a way that we drove through specifically the Trinity Forest, Trinity River area. On our way to Redding, we're driving and we both looked at each other after long minutes of uncomfortable silence and said, I think this is it. I think we're home. Actually, that's exactly what I said. And I think you said, I think you're right. And it was just kind of this, like, we pulled off on this overlook, this beautiful river and forest and just kind of like in silence, walked the dogs around this little pull off and we're like, oh my God, like, this is it. This is so beautiful. 
And I think it was more the shock of finding it immediately. Like it was literally in our backyards. I had spent so much energy and time believing and creating the narrative. Oh, I hate California. California is gross. California is expensive. California is busy. Like I, I'll never live in California. I must have said that a hundred times. And it was right there because NorCal, if you haven't been, and if you have, you already know what I'm about to say, is not like California. It's still the Pacific Northwest. It's all forest. It's no major cities in that top fifth chunk of the state. We fall in love and I start looking at land and this property came up. Our necessities and requirements for land are very unique. We need it a lot. We needed it to be able to be off grid, meaning having its own water source and we needed privacy and we needed the forest. And so we had a really almost impossible to be honest, list of things. And this land checks all of them times 10 and ones we didn't even know we had. And we've been looking at it for a long time, since last year. We finally, a few months ago, because our situation is approaching that point, got a realtor and we've been working with her. And so when we went to High Vibe, we drove up there and we got to see the land. It was incredibly overwhelming. (laughs) I don't want to spend too much time on this because more to come we're still integrating and grounding and so I don't think I would be doing justice to truth and to myself if I kind of got into it but beautifully overwhelming everything I thought it would be and more it's definitely the land and we have decided to stop traveling and travel our way back to the Pacific Northwest and so when we leave here in about nine days we're back in Austin We are driving through Colorado for two weeks, Utah for two weeks, and then we will be back in Northern California in a month to see the property again because we didn't even get to scratch the surface of over 300 acres. So yeah, I mean, it was amazing and I'm still a little bit in shock that this thing that I've been dreaming of for five years, that I've been making happen for financially for the last year and a half that I've been staring at for six months was there. I was standing on it. It was right there. It was real. Yeah, and it's a testament to the power of holding that vision, holding that dream in our third eye constantly, just creating it. Every move that we made, every decision that we made, the growth in our journey was curated to get to this place. While there's been significant work for us, both in the spiritual and the 3D, really have to give it up to God and the divine because this wouldn't be possible without that divine guidance. We've been doing the work and because we've been focusing on that, everything else is coming so naturally and so fluidly. It has been an effortless process in that we aren't having to force or control the situation at all. The only thing that we are focusing on is our growth and making sure that we are aligned with the mission. Because when we do that, when we align ourselves with God, everything falls into place. I'm kind of getting emotional as you're talking because, you know, we're human, y'all. Like, we're on this journey with you. We've had some rough patterns come up these last few weeks. We had one day at the festival where we were in conflict. And my ego is, like most egos are, pretty brutal on me. But listening to you talking, you know, I'm over here like snapping and getting emotional and yes, like all glory to the most high. We're just being lived. We're just experiencing this and we're just surrendering to what's being put in front of us. But we have done the work. We continue to do the work, like the commitment and integrity to doing those hard things always, especially when we fall because that's when it's hardest to do them, right? It's easy to do them when you're on a roll and it feels good and everything's woo-woo. It's hard to do it when you fall down and then you have to not only overcome the ego, but also overcome the pride of the ego. The fact that we continuously get back up and come back to love is really beautiful. I choose love. I also choose love. (laughs) Thank you so much for sharing that. A pattern that recently has come to light through our experiences and through the mirror of conscious community is that we are given these visions of these high energetic experiences that show us what's possible. And then shortly after, almost with complete certainty, there is this massive drop 
and experience of the shadows because you can't experience those massive highs without delving into the shadows and clearing that energy to make yourself a match for that next level. And each time that you experience that pattern, heal, transmute, see the vision, work on the shadow, you create a higher baseline for your consciousness. Mm, that is a very accurate description. And then that higher baseline just continues to grow. And so you come off of a conflict or a low or a shadow, however you perceive it, and then you're even higher than you were before you went into that shadow. It's this really interesting flow of growth. And I would argue over time, those shadows get tougher because you get so accustomed to that high frequency. You get so accustomed to being in the frequency of love, right? Being in truth, like everything is love. There's only love. So anytime we're not in love, we're outside of truth. You get so used to being in that, that when you go into the shadows, you're like, shit, it's pretty dark in here. Like this isn't fun. But again, the rewards are so worth it. Getting into the core of today, what is the vision? The vision is a love sanctuary and sovereign conscious community. And we're going to go through some of those words and give you what we've learned and what we're implementing and hope that you will take that out into your lives because you have a community all around you. You know, your friends are your community, your family's a community, your community you live in is a community. And we're all stewards of this land and we're all returning to sovereignty eventually. And we all are in need of healing. And so looking at kind of these pillars, starting with what is a sanctuary? Sanctuary is actually defined as refuge or safety from, insert blank, or a safe place of protection. What do we need sanctuary from? Um, the systems, <laughs> the matrix, if you will, the legal system, the political system, all those systems, ego, right? Shadows, the, the if darkness, if you will, though I use that word because that's just the word we have for that contrast, not because it's inherently dark. Toxicity was the only word I could think of. I was trying to think of a word to encompass all of the bad yucky things out in the world, like the technical things, and I just couldn't come up with anything else. Pollution, chemicals, pesticides, GMOs, carbon emissions, they're chemicalizing and treating our water. Every single thing out in the main matrix system cities is toxic. It just is. Unless you are doing great investment into your home, into water filtration, into you know, raw organic foods, you are being poisoned. And that's just the reality of the world we live in. And so we need sanctuary from a lot of things. And I am not going to get into future guessing or doom and gloom. This isn't negative. Remember, everything has to be purged and come to the light in order for us to ascend collectively. However, I think in the very new future, specifically three to six months, definitely within the next year, we're going to need sanctuary from a lot more in the direction that the world's going right now and needs to go again to get through these shadows it's gonna have to get a little bit worse before it gets better friends that's what a sanctuary is it's a space that you can come and be safe and have refuge from all of those things you did a great job of reminding everybody that you can begin creating sanctuary in your current existence that's what we did when we were still in the process of waking up and healing and living in Oregon in that house, we worked really hard to curate a sanctuary in a safe place within our home. Whether it was water filtration, air filtration, the food we were consuming, the energy of the home, the lack of chemicals, all of those things are something that you can work on right now to start curating that container for yourself from an energetic perspective, making sure that you feel safe in your home, that it's a place where you can come and decompress and connect with yourself and connect with the divine. That is incredibly important. Making that place a sanctuary for yourself is just incredibly important. You can cultivate all of these things in your current world. You don't need to move to the middle of nowhere in a forest and get several hundred acres of land to do it all yourself. Again, this has been a five-year journey for us. Cultivating community is the second piece. This is something that we are really deeply focusing on and that this trip showed us needs to be our primary focus right now. 
through this land, this sanctuary, this vision, and you as you cultivate community, we are creating a container that is sacred. And it has that high standard, that high level of integrity and accountability and authenticity. You're supporting each other in doing the work. Spiritual work is not easy. You cannot do it completely alone. At some point, you can only get so far because relationships are how we heal. It's the foundation of this podcast. You need people to mirror back to you because your mind and your ego will create delusion and you need that safety check in others. At its core, it's cultivating a community that is choosing love always and making the commitment to personal growth and coming back to love which is our core most values. It's the core first tenet of this conscious partnership, and it's going to definitely be one of the core tenets of the community. Always choosing love. It's such a beautiful experience to be around other people who are all in alignment, who are choosing love, who are choosing growth. And that doesn't mean that everybody's perfect and it's this woo woo la la land of like oh we're this sanctuary the purpose of community is to have a vulnerable place to share your shadow it's to be able to go to those depths and say hey friends this is how i express when i'm in shadow please hold me to my highest standard love me enough to call me out and then love your community enough to be able to to respect them and receive when they are mirroring things back. When you have a container of even two, three to five or six people that are all in agreement, it doesn't matter how long you've known each other. Some of the people in our community we've known for weeks and we've gone to depths in conversation and connection that we haven't gone to with most of our family members. Yeah. I want to take a second to save some space for that and for these people and what you were just talking about because a year ago, I didn't have one single close friend. I had a lot of friends, but like close friend that I talked to regularly that I went deep with, that type of like deep conscious divine friendship, I didn't have one. Today, I have 10, almost 15 people in my life who I have gone as deep as I have with this person in front of me for eight years, almost. And I talk to almost all of them regularly and often. I see most of them every week on our community call. We put together a Google Meet, and I encourage you to do this with your friends, especially in this time where we need so much connection and reminder that we're not alone in what's happening. We do these community calls, and I get to see them, and to just have an army of highly conscious, in integrity, authentic, loving human beings is truly life-changing. And while I only had one or two up until three months ago, in three months, I've made almost double digits of those types of connections. Like deep, lifelong, I know I'm going to be with these people till I'm old, soul family. Like my whole soul family came overnight. I guess I finally got that prayer right. (laughs) And they just, just kept coming. And I want, I know many of them are listening to this. And I just want to say like, we love you so much. And we are so grateful for the opportunity to be in conscious community. We didn't know what that was and we're learning. And that's great because that's what we're trying to do here is teach other people how to be in conscious relationship with everyone and everything. And so thank you to the people that are holding the mirrors up for us and that are being vulnerable with us and going deep and having those tough conversations. I'm kind of speechless because it really has been such a long journey and so much of it was spent just you and I. It really is a testament to holding that frequency for your tribe and your community. Every community needs a pillar. And when you can start that, you start attracting like-minded individuals And when you hold that frequency and you hold that high integrity of the container, people feel safe to drop in and go deep. So what does it look like to cultivate community in your life right now? Well, one, it starts by working on yourself and holding that frequency. Two, you have to start holding other people to that frequency 
And you'll see really quickly who is ready for that depth of connection and who's not. And then being able to release and allow those people to vibrate out of your life to make space for the people who are ready for that. Mm, Absolutely. So that's the conscious community piece of it, which, spoiler alert, at some point in the future, we are all going to be living in conscious community. That's where we're headed, and I can't wait. (laughs) The next kind of really big piece here is the land, stewarding the land, healing our relationship to Mother Earth, to this planet, healing our relationship with the local tribes, which is something we have every intention of doing with this land, healing our relationship with our resources, our food, our waste. And I want to pause on that one because that is one blessing that has come out of RV life. It really brings you back into your resources. Like you are solely responsible for your own water, your own sewer, your own food, etc. Like it's a very different life. And so I'm grateful to have had this six months to really like heal that relationship and understand energy is precious. It's a finite resource. Well, it's infinite, but when you're getting it, it's a finite resource when you're on solar. And water is sacred. It's, you only, your tank is only so big. So side note on there of just really getting to heal that relationship. It's also energetically preserving and protecting the sanctity and the sacredness of that land, like the actual land itself. What we do as trauma happens, as trying to think of other words but the only one I can think of is trauma or challenging events happens it happens to the land too it happens to the energy of that place too we've heard a lot from some of our friends that are deep in working with the land that when they go into a space they usually have to do clearing you have to do energy work and healing because the land is carrying that trauma and we definitely experienced that in the house we bought it was a trap house before us And man, did it have some energy. And I think that affected us a lot until we woke up and realized, oh, maybe we should clear some energy in this space. But I digress. The point here is a lot goes into stewarding land. And this is something that our community consistently reflects back to us that I'm going to receive and amplify because it is truth. That level of commitment and integrity, we have aligned intentions. We are in this for the right reason. We're not trying to just buy a bunch of land to build some sanctuary to make money. It's all going to be nonprofit. And it's that commitment to stewarding the land and to being intentional with communing with this land and not just going into, oh, I bought it. It's mine. And now I'm going to take resources from it and use it for my good and bring whatever energy I want. Every single thing that we do with, on, and for this land must be intentional to maintain that sanctity and that sacredness. We are not separate from the land. The land is an extension of our body, of our spirit. It's a reflection of what we are cultivating in our own temple, in our own sanctuary, within ourselves and within our souls. And so when we steward land, it's incredibly important to have a synergistic relationship with it to be in communion with the land, to work with it naturally rather than, you know, forcefully taking from it as the collective has been doing on this planet for so long. I kind of think of like when people buy their homes, right? And then they just go like ripping up all the old vegetation and putting in grass and all this stuff, right? Like, did we stop and ask the land or the plants like how they felt about that? It's being an intentional relationship where everything that you do has that level of consciousness of, is what I'm doing helping or hurting? When we live from that level of integrity and presence, we can create such beautiful containers in the land and in the space. When we visited this land, our good friend who is connected with the energies of land was able to communicate to us that this is virgin land. This is land that does not have an energetic and karmic tie to it, both in trauma, but also in love. We were put here by the divine to be caretakers and stewards of this earth. When we leave land abandoned or we do not care for it, it's just like our partner, right? They aren't receiving that love And then 
they don't have that energetic back and forth to be able to give to their fullest expression. And so when we are giving to the land selflessly, being stewards of it and not being in control of it, it will open up and give so much gifts. Something we always say is this is not our land and we will do everything in our power to keep it out of our names legally and that this is a community. This is the community's land. When we talk to our friends, we refer to it as that. We don't say we're getting our land. It's we're getting the community land, the sanctuary land. And another really big piece is, at least in this specific land, it's in the forest. And there's a really sacred and symbolic beauty in the forest. The forest is traditionally associated with healing and endurance and courage. You have these trees that literally bridge the earth and the sky, right? And it really is this like symbol of divinity. The forest is a magical place. It's 80% of the biodiversity is in the forest. And to be able to live in, literally in, a national forest, completely surrounded by national forest land, that is a gift. That is a beauty that is sacred. And so we take seriously being stewards of the land. We encourage you to start being a steward of your land. And even if you live in an apartment complex, you still have a little bit of exposed land right in front of your front door. This can be done everywhere. Being stewards of the things in your home, of your home itself, of maybe taking better care of your your body, your vehicle. Really start to think about how we can steward the land because she needs love. <laughs> Our mother earth needs some love. Ignorance is not a pass out of this. We have all collectively poisoned this planet. We have all collectively abandoned our planet. It's our responsibility to steward her back into a frequency of love. And you would be amazed at how quickly that happens. The third one here is returning to sovereignty. I love this word. It just feels good to say. Like, just say it. Sovereignty. Like, it just rolls off the mouth. Sovereignty from what? Sovereignty from the legal system, not going to get into that. You're either into it or you're not. Both realities are welcome. We happen to be. Sovereignty and resources. Do you have food sovereignty, water sovereignty, power sovereignty? Are you at the mercy of a system or a business or a government or a corporation, essentially? And also spiritual sovereignty. Are you living in a state of vibration and frequency and energy and awareness that you are the divine expressing itself, that you are a sovereign soul, creation, child, whatever you want to call it, of the divine, and that you have the full authority and autonomy over your creation, over your experience, over your reality. No system or government or fictitious entity has the right to have sovereignty over your soul. You have that, and the creator has that. And so really living in an aligned place of being spiritually sovereign. Mm, I love so much that you just shared that right now. Because especially in the spiritual aspect, coming from a, a Catholic background myself and experiencing a lot of religion, not only in my experience, but other experiences from extended family to community, etc., are you the one that is leading your spiritual growth? Ask yourself that. Because if you're not, then you are not sovereign. You are not fulfilling your purpose on this planet. Because nobody in this world could possibly know what your highest timeline is other than you. You have everything that you need within yourself. And so take charge of your own spiritual journey. Break out of that control and allow yourself to have a personal relationship with God, Source, Creator, whatever label you have for the divine. I don't know if you ever have one of those moments where like you get into a flow and then something's channeled and then you kind of come back for a second and you're like, wow, that was really powerful. I just had one of those moments right there. Talking about spiritual sovereignty lights my soul on fire. If there is anything that I am passionate about, screw the legal stuff, screw the technical stuff, like all of that aside, it's about making sure that people know and understand that you are a sovereign child of God. Again, insert different words that work for you. It's the same essence experience and no one can take that away from you. 
they can arrest you, they can do this, they can put all of these things on you, but you are sovereign and free always. You just have to know how to claim it. You just have to know how to align with it. And these are all great ways to do it and great ways to start. It leads us into our last piece here, which is the healing portion, the healing sanctuary, healing center. I don't know, we haven't nailed that down yet. And really what this part was, was not only having the core community that, you know, lives there and and stewards this land, but having a separate kind of more public facing area where people can come and heal, where people can come and get true medicine, original medicine, holistic medicine, and learn the spiritual, financial, technical, emotional, food, all of these aspects of reclaiming your sovereignty, reclaiming your consciousness, reclaiming your power from all that is the external world and system. It's really coming back to that core essence. We haven't had like a whole lot of visions or like big dreams around this. It's just kind of something that was like in our awareness. And I know why now, because we recently had another court community member come in and that specific pillar is their vision. And so that's just how beautiful God is. That's just how beautiful God works. It's so much grace and so much intention and so much love to just see all of these pieces coming together. And I'm so grateful we've had five years to think about this. And, you know, a year and a half to like really ready ourselves for this because we are stepping into community leadership roles. We are stepping into leading, stewarding this land and leading this community. That is a really, it's a really big step. And it's like a really divine gift that I'm so grateful for. And I'm just so blown away. I had this moment on the land, like looking around, I had a lot of moments. It was very overwhelming in the best way, but I had this moment of looking around and realizing that over half of our relationship and a fifth of my life, I've spent dreaming this dream, visioning this vision, and it's here. It's actually happening. Like we are actually doing this and to see that coming to fruition my hope in sharing all of this with you all today is that you know that you have to start somewhere. Start with your space. Start cultivating community. Put a call together with your closest friends. Start stewarding the land you live on, wherever that is, whatever that is. It is all our land, and we are all responsible for caring for our Mother Earth. Start picking up trash. Start leaving it better than you found it. It's one of our core values in this family these days. Leave it better than you found it. If you see something, do something about it because you have the capacity to and those acts of kindness ripple out into the collective, ripple into the energetic field of this planet. Love is so powerful. It's so powerful when we care for our community and our land, when we come back to our sovereignty, remember who we are, remembering that divinity, remembering that sovereignty, remembering that you are healer because we are all healers, remembering that sanctuaries are what it's all supposed to be. This whole planet can be can and will be a sanctuary someday. And I encourage you to go out and find your own healing sanctuary. Our act of service and our calling has been to create this healing sanctuary and to share our experience so that others can heal. However, everybody has the capacity to heal themselves. That's the thing. No healer truly heals anyone. They just assist you in healing yourself. On the sovereignty side of things, take your healing back. Take ownership of that. Start delving into your negative patterns and your gifts and start somewhere. Start walking that, whether it's plant medicine, whether it's acupuncture, whether it's energy healing like Reiki, or just plain old meditation or prayer, whatever works for you. Just start somewhere. And a really great place to start is remembering and sharing and amplifying that love is a sanctuary. Create that sanctuary of love for yourself, for your loved ones, for your home, for this planet, because the more of us that continue to do that, the quicker we'll get there. We're definitely going there regardless, but we'll get there a little bit easier and a little bit faster. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for listening to this vision. We would love for you to reach out if any of this calls to you. If you feel aligned with this and want to be a part of this community, reach out to us. Definitely subscribe to the show. Please leave us a review wherever you're listening. Just know, as always, we're sending you so much love. 
We have an interview tomorrow for our next episode. We are going to be talking about the divine feminine, the divine mother. I'm so excited for that because that is crazily manifesting in my life and most of the feminine people in my life. It's really a time for sisterhood and for exalting that divine feminine. And so that's what our next episode is going to be on. We can't wait to have her on and we will see you all here soon.